let me go into the final part of my talk here, which is going to be talking about some of the parallels between ecstasy and antidepressants, and why I think, and one hypothesis for some of the symptoms that we're experiencing, because the mechanism of these two drugs is very similar if you look at the effects on the synapse. Okay, now let's just talk about the typical neuronal structure. So you have these axon terminals, which is, neurons are basically, they connect to one another throughout the whole body. It's just a big network of, of basic, it's like a big network of, of these cells that all communicate to one another and are highly complex and interact in highly complex ways. But if you break them down, you can, you basically have two, three major parts of the, of the uh, neuron. You have the axon terminals, you have this, which is the axon. You have basically the axon and the dendrite, okay? Axon terminals are one thing, but you have the axon, and then you have the dendrite here. And the dendrites have these, are like these, uh, they have this, basically, they almost look like trees. They have a great, uh, they have a lot of surface area. All these individual parts of the cell uh, have these at the end of them. At the, oh, where is it? There it is. The, every single tip of each of these dendrite uh, prongs there has has basically these receptors on it, these serotonin receptors, and it has a lot of other receptors too. I'm going to talk about the serotonin receptors because these are the ones that are most commonly affected by antidepressants. So you have the axon, the ter the terminal dendrite, and then the ac the uh, the axon where the c uh, cells are that where their signal is then transmitted down to the uh, next cell. So basically, at the on on the receptor. Uh, on the, you're gonna have to hang with me here, folks, because my brain's rather fried from these drugs. But anyway, you have these receptors on the postsynaptic membrane that accept uh, serotonin from the uh, presynaptic membrane. And when you take antidepressants, what happens is uh, serotonin floods into the synapse, and all these receptors here are then flooded with a tremendous amount of serotonin and cell signaling increases rather dramatically because the sen the serotonin that was supposed to go back up into the neuron uh, into the uh, presynaptic membrane is blocked so you have this flood of serotonin and what happens is these receptors over time are down regulated and so all of a sudden you go from having let's say here in this in this image you have four they'll look at down regulated you only have like you only have 50% of the previous density, so you'll have half of that. And so so now, even though you have a flood of serotonin in the synapse, you still get the same amount of synaptic uh, signaling that, I mean, neuronal signaling that you got before you took the drug because there have been physical changes in your neurons that have taken place. Now, let's take a look at, so now you understand what, this, what the neuron structure looks like. Now, See all these little yellow things in here? These are all individual neurons that are in uh, that are in the raphe nucleus, which is the highest density density of 5-HT neurons in the brain. Those are serotonin neurons, right? So every single one of these dendrites here, and then the the neuron that that connects to them. This is it, it, just imagine a giant web of these things. But every single one of these throughout the entire brain has that change that I just described. It goes from having these four receptors to like two of them in the entire brain. It's not just a couple neurons in the emotional part of the brain that are downregulated. Everything, not only in the brain, but also the gut as well. Now, if, now these are the ref, these are the 5-HT neurons that proceed throughout the entire brain. Now, what happens if you have problems with these 5-HT neurons at the raphe nucleus, in the prefrontal cortex, all the way back to the other parts of the brain as well. You're going to have some serious problems in your head, aren't you? Because now let's take a look at what these 5-HT neurons do. These 5-HT neurons, so this is Wikipedia, here's the receptor on the left, and here are the functions here. Addiction, aggression, anxiety, appetite, autoreceptor, blood pressure, cardiovascular function, heart rate, impulsivity, memory, mood, nausea, no nociception, penile erection, pupil dilation, respiration, sexual behavior, sleep, sociability, thermoregulation, vasoconstriction. That's not all. Let's keep going. 
learning, locomotion, memory, mood, sexual behavior, vasoconstriction. Now, these are all the individual neurons. There's thousands of these things. Migraines, sleep, perception, mood, memory, learning, imagination, cognition, appetite. GI motility, sleep, vasoconstriction, cardiovascular function. As you can see, it might be a slight problem if all these neurons throughout the entire body are affected because not only is it going to affect mood, but it's going to affect vasoconstriction, thermoregulation, sleep, sexual behavior, penile dysfunction, mood, locomotion, uh, GI motility, appetite, anxiety. Not only that, but these neurons, when they're affected, they also affect the release of norepinephrine and acetylcholine. So not so when you take an antidepressant, not only are you affecting serotonin, but you're all of a sudden affecting norepinephrine and acetylcholine receptors as well, as well, which have these same, which have even more functions that are affected. So it's no small wonder why those packets that you get with these drugs has so are so long. They're like 30 pages long, and you're reading them thinking, "Gee, good thing it only says one or two percent likelihood." Yeah, well. <laughs> You probably understand by now if you're watching this video that those drug companies lie and that's not true. But this just this is just a basic generalization of some of the more profound effects that these drugs can have on people. Is it any small wonder that we have withdrawal symptoms after taking them? Now let's take a look at something, a closely related drug, because the drug companies aren't going to study SSRI effects on the brain, but they will study ecstasy because it's a quote-unquote illegal drug and it competes with their drug trade which is basically the pharmaceutical drugs. They don't want competition. So they try as hard as they can to propagate uh, negative information about these drugs. But ironically, let's does this look familiar to you guys? How ecstasy works. Now, this is an extreme generalization. And I'm going to talk... It also affects all the other neurotransmitters, uh, acetylcholine, dopamine. It affects a lot of other ones as well. But serotonin is this main one. So ecstasy blocks the resorption of serotonin. Oh, is not what antidepressants do. Serotonin floods the synapse. Receptor sites are downregulated. Huh. That's interesting, isn't it? Now, this is the scary part of the talk, but it's something I want to talk about because what happens with ecstasy, if you take a large enough dose, you actually damage the dendrites in the brain. The 5-HT neurons that I showed these here, now, this is just in the raphe nucleus, but they extend throughout the entire brain. These dendrite heads here, I need to pull up a picture. Take ecstasy. These dendrites here, see all that surface area? This is all damaged. And what you end up with instead is basically a, uh, a pruned tree. And what happens under that circumstance is all of a sudden all these neurons that were communicating with one another can no longer communicate. And you have this, basically, you just have a, a blank brain. And, you know, I've heard stories of people that take ecstasy, and they're just completely depersonalized. Now, let's take a look at this picture. So all those, you know, all that surface area that I showed you, the dendrite head, after taking a very large dose of ecstasy, now you have to remember, this is a large dose. It's not like taking 20 milligrams of Prozac. It's like taking 600 milligrams of Prozac. But after two weeks, I mean, look at the damage that is done. You have this three-dimensional structure and then is that, that is then basically completely demolished. Seven years later, you just get basically a 50% recovery. Now, the, the point a lot of people bring up, and here's another one. Anyway, the point a lot of people bring up is that ecstasy is only taken one time. But what happens if you take antidepressants every day for 20 years? Is something like this possible? Well, considering the mechanism of ecstasy and the mechanism of antidepressants is quite common, I honestly don't see why not. I, you can't possibly write it out. Write it off, rather. Here's another image of that. Just look at the damage. Seven years later, you get just basically no recovery. It's not easy to recover from damage to the central nervous system. That's my point. Yes, neuroplasticity exists. Look at this. This image portrays it pretty easily. 50% recovery. But that's 50% in seven years. That's never going to recover 100%. So, I, hope, I don't want to scare anyone here, but it's not out of the question that some of these effects are, can be caused by antidepressant medications. Because just look at the similarity in the mechanism. It's basically the exact same thing. 
And if you take a drug every single day for a long period of time, you're probably going to get similar reactions. Now, I've heard that people recover from these drugs quite often, as I portrayed in my previous video. So don't guess. We, there is the internet that exists, and we could have looked this up and done the research on our own. At least I blame myself for not looking more into it. I believed the system too much. I, I trusted the doctors. I trusted these guys. Psychiatrists. Let's see if I can pull a picture of a generalized. Yeah, look. I trusted these guys. These guys in the white coats that only have four years of technical training. They don't understand anything. All they understand is how to study, memorize things quick a lot very well, and regurgitate the information on paper and then make a lot of money off of ignorant people that believe in the system like me. So <laughs> There you go. That's a psychiatrist for you. That's pretty much what they what they are. Sleazebags that like to take your money and ruin your lives. Alright, folks. On that positive note, I am going to end this video. I hope you found the uh, video interesting and somewhat informative. And I'm going to continue to post videos of this sort in the future. So, keep your eye open. And if you like this video, give it a thumb up. If you want to leave some comments... Please do so in this comment section below, and as always, if you've hung in there for this entire period of time, I, I want to thank you. Alright, take care.